Actor Danny Glover has been in hit movies going back decades, but it's his vocal opposition to injustice that has put him in the headlines in recent years. Recently, our Lindsay Davis spoke with this national treasure to discuss his career, his upbringing, and the legacy he is actively building for those following in his footsteps. I'm too old for this. Fortunately for Danny Glover, there's no expiration date on his two passions, acting and activism. Connecting their story to our collective stories of struggle. And that's what we're doing here today. Just over a week ago, the 74-year-old fired up the crowd at a rally to support the Asian community. Yes, we stand here, we'll stand here, we'll fight here. We've got your back. I imagine many people looking at you could say, hey, you could be resting on your laurels, right? And instead, you're out there uh, fighting and protesting. And so I'm curious what it is within you that compels that. I think there's so many, there's in all of us. I, that's not just me. His activism is far reaching from immigration to farm workers to the humanitarian crisis in Darfur. He's been arrested during a labor union protest and appointed a goodwill ambassador for the United Nations. Well, a lot of people are not getting arrested for their beliefs. A lot of people are not uh, spending their precious time out on a, a protest line. But there's a platform that the platform that we that I have, you know, as an artist and a citizen. And maybe it's the examples of, of people who said, uh, why can't I not? Maybe it's the story about my grandmother. They began to share when we were married in 1915, my grandparents. And when the, the overseer of the land, he said, where are they? Where are the children at? And my grandmother and, and all her, my children in the school, when they're in school, my children don't work in the fields. He turned to my grandfather and said to my grandfather, you better teach your woman how to talk to white people. And that sums it up. I'm sitting here in front of this camera because Reese May Huntley was going to make sure with all her strength, they were not going to impose limitations to her children's life. That's why I sit here. And also why, on June 19, 2019, he sat testifying at a congressional hearing on slavery reparations, which he called a moral, democratic, and economic imperative. I sit here as the great-grandson of a former slave, Mary Brown, who was freed by the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st, 1863. Born in San Francisco to postal workers who were also activists, growing up he struggled with dyslexia, which he says only made him work harder. You've described early on dealing with your own diminished expectations of who you could be. How did you get past that? Whatever it was, I, I felt that, that there was something else in me, and I had people to validate I mean, about what I could be. Both my parents, they had lived through the, the darkness of segregation. They knew all the things of lynchings and everything else. I saw them as my heroes. How did you get the idea to become an actor? I, I came up with young parents who were involved in movements. If things were happening, there was a kind of discourse around my house. So the anti-apartheid movement brought me to an extraordinary writer named Athol Fugard. Once I was in his, his play, uh, his early plays, I, I knew at some point in time that this was the work that I wanted to do. You, of course, have uh, been a stage actor, a screen actor, a voice actor, director, activist. Which hat fits you the most comfortably? I love doing films. <laughs> There's something about magic doing film. There are lines in magic and things that happen in film they come alive and, and they repeat it. I don't want to kill you and you don't want to be dead. We're working on a film, Jamie Foxx, and when I would come on the set, Jamie would say, here comes, I don't want to kill you and you don't want to be dead. <laughs> what a great line. 
According to IMDb, you've acted in more than 200 roles, uh, going from, you know, Lethal Weapon to... Let her go now! ...to Jumanji. I'd love to come in for a cup of coffee. ...to The Color Purple. I should have locked you up! Is there one that, in particular, um, sticks with you, was a favorite role? There's so many, but there's one role that would always be the one that stands out for me, and that was my first major role. Uh, where I played modes in places in the heart. It's my gift to my mother and my lineage. It's my gift to my grandparents, um, in a sense. And it'll always be my favorite. The first thing my, my grandfather saw when he saw me in the fields, he said, boy, what you know about picking cotton? We finished. We've done it. Do people still recite the Sealy uh, until you do right by me curse as well? You're poor, you're ugly, you're a woman, you're nothing at all. Do you do right by me? Everything you even think about gonna fail. <laughs> I got that from day one, you know. My grandmother did not know what I did exactly. And, and she found out, they got her to see the color purple. And they said she came out of there Hopping mad. She said, I'm gonna get a switch after that boy. He know he was raised better than an act like that. So I had to bring a switch in. She had to hit me with a switch. Treat that woman like that. <laughs> you know that's some good acting when people are so angry with you acting. Oh, right? baby, she, it, I still think about it and laugh at her now. He's also thinking about making a movie telling the story of the Tulsa race massacre in 1921. Tulsa, Oklahoma. You look at like Wall Street. First, there was this amazing uh, a, a collection, group of, of, of entrepreneurs and community, building a community, and all of a sudden in 1921, 100 years ago, it was, it, was, it was a massacre and it was burned down. It was rebuilt later, but what happened after that? Well, what would you like your legacy to be? That's an interesting time thing um, I, I, I know more that I tried to be the best citizen that I could be um, I remember Miss Lumber she's from Beaumont Texas and the kids she was teaching were primarily African American we lived in the housing projects federal housing projects at the time and she came in I remember saying I'm not simply in the, ma the business of making good students. I'm in the business of making good citizens. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.